I'm currently in Kyoto, which is basically the cultural and historical heart of Japan. It's famous for its Buddhist temples, gardens, palaces, and shrines. But my favorite part is how beautiful the natural landscapes are in this area and how that influences Japanese culture. You guys hear that? That is the sound of Japan in the summer. It's the sound of thousands and thousands of cicadas in the trees. And for anyone who is familiar with Japan in the summer, it's a very nostalgic sound. We're starting our first day out and about in Kyoto with a visit to a local book festival. My mom was born and raised in this area, so it's really nice to be able to visit her favorite spots with her. Unfortunately, I don't know enough Japanese to be able to truly appreciate this book fair. So instead, I wandered off on my own to explore this beautiful park. Well, it started pouring rain and I kind of feel a sense of irony here. Kind of the worst thing to be selling in the rain are books. Next up for the day is a scenic train ride to Kibune, a small town in a lush forested valley. And to really appreciate the landscape, the sides and the ceilings of the train are transparent and the views just keep getting better the higher you get up the mountains. The Kawadoko of Kibune began in the Taisho era in the early 1900s, when people would come to the river to cool down and sit on a small bench to wash their feet, enjoy some food, and have a little bit of tea. This traditional style of dining continues on today, and it is a very refreshing thing to do during the hot summer months. Aside from this cuisine, Kibune is known for the Kifune Shrine, which is dedicated to the god of water and rain and believed to be the protector of those at sea. At this shrine, you can buy a fortune written on paper slips called omikuji, and they reveal their messages when dipped into water. Luckily, all good fortune for me. Japan has no shortage of interesting trains, but this might be the most beautiful train ride in all of Japan. It's called the Sagano Romantic Train, and it runs along the Hosugawa River between Arashiyama and Kamioka. This is a very charming open-air train that winds its way through the mountains with incredible views of the forested ravine. My mom and I are doing a fun little scenic adventure today. We just took the romantic train up the mountain, which was absolutely gorgeous. Basically just river views and going through mountain tunnels. And now since we're at the top of the river, we are gonna go down it with the same boats that we saw earlier go down the river. We just got to the boarding point and now we're gonna get in the boat. We're currently heading down the Hosegawa River in a traditional style flat bottom boat that's operated by three boatmen with oars and bamboo poles. This river was originally used to transport logs that were used to build many of Kyoto's and Osaka's famous temples and castles. Eventually, trains and trucks took over in the modern era and used as transport instead, but these boats were brought back to become a fun sightseeing experience. <laughs> There's a boat coming that sells cold cucumbers and beer, and I'm definitely gonna get some. The boat has dropped us off in Arashiyama and we now have the entire afternoon to explore at leisure. It is so hot outside, so we went inside of the store and got some kakigori. This is yuzu flavored, which I've actually never tried before and it seems so refreshing. <laughs> The Arashiyama Bamboo Grove is arguably one of the most photographed sites of the city, but for good reason. When you're walking down these pathways, you feel this sense of otherworldliness and it just feels magical. It's so nice and shady, so despite it being a million degrees outside, 
kind of refreshing in here. So right behind me is a shrine dedicated to beautiful hair. So if you're someone who's maybe balding or wants help growing out their hair, then maybe paying a visit to the shrine is not a bad idea. Just walking around and window shopping in Arashiyama is so much fun. Something I feel that is uniquely Japanese is how they incorporate characters into their food or decorations, and it just makes everything so cute. There's just such attention to detail, even in the smallest of things. So we stopped by a restaurant because it was getting really hot outside, and we just found like this little random alleyway that led to this hidden gem and we're having a little wagyu yakiniku and the way that they present this is so cute with a little teapot for yourself over your own little fire and then the view is absolutely beautiful overlooking a traditional Japanese garden. So the main reason why we are in Arashiyama today is to attend the Toro Nagashi Festival, which occurs once a year during Obon, a time when it's believed that the spirits of ancestors come back to this world. This event is held as a memorial service, and every year the lanterns carry prayers and are floated on the Katsura River. It's believed that these lanterns will help guide our ancestor spirits back to the other world. But unfortunately, the weather was not cooperating and we only got to see a few moments of these beautiful lanterns float down the river before the wind and the rain got crazy. Good morning guys! It's the next day and my mom and I are supposed to be going to Nara today on a little day trip but the weather is not really cooperating. It is pouring pouring rain and so we have these big umbrellas to bring with us. It could be a very bad idea to be outside today but we're just gonna go try and see what happens and hope that the rain stops. If not it's gonna be a very rainy adventure but let's see what happens. We're continuing on with the theme of novelty trains in Japan with this Aoniyoshi sightseeing train bound for Nara on the Kintetsu line. This train is gorgeous, painted a deep purple with ornate floral designs, and once you enter the train, you walk along a carpeted lounge area with plush green chairs with a personal table, and each of these chairs are angled towards the window so that you can really enjoy the view. There's even a little library sitting area, comfortable bathrooms, and perhaps the coolest part of the train, an in-train cafe that sells Nara-themed food items. This train is the coolest train that I've ever been on. It's very nature woodsy themed, which makes sense since we're going to a place that's famous for its deer. Nara Koen contains many important cultural sites, but perhaps what intrigues visitors like myself the most are the large population of semi-wild deer that roam around the park. You can buy a pack of crackers called Shika Osembe to feed them, and some of them will bow politely to you, but they are infamous for being a bit aggressive. But... <laughs> Yeah. They definitely kind of nip at you and surround you if they know you have crackers. But now that I've done it, I think I've kind of gotten the hang of it. So I don't think I'll be as intimidated anymore. But there are deers everywhere here. Literally everywhere. So aside from the deer sprinkled around the city, Nara has a huge historical significance as well because it was the first ever planned city in Japan way before Kyoto became the capital and then Tokyo after that.
So after walking around Nada all day long, we decided to get some lunch and we found this interesting spot where they actually do kind of traditional herbal medicinal bento lunches. So we are trying it out right now. So I am now back at the airport hotel that my mom and I began our trip at. She's actually staying on in Japan, but I will be going home, which is why we separated. But it was such a fun trip getting to spend time with my mom and my family over here in Japan and some of my friends and just feeling really grateful to have this experience and to be able to reconnect with people that I love. Like always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.